Welcome back to the online conference of the future of museum professionals in the digital era. We are happy to see that many of you are reconnecting uh, as we have an exciting panel discussion ahead of us, focusing on the crucial and most urgent needs in regards to the training of museum professionals in digital skills. I'm happy to give the virtual microphone over to Margarita Sani now, who will be moderating this panel discussion. Margarita works at the Institute of Cultural Heritage of the region of Emilia-Romagna, where she is in charge of international projects in the museum field. In the last 20 years, she has designed and managed several EU-funded projects, in particular on museum education, lifelong learning and intercultural dialogue. Margarita, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Natalie, and <clears throat> welcome back, everyone, to this uh, final session of the conference, uh, which is titled as the conference itself, The Future of Museum Professionals in the Digital Era. Now, I would like to start uh, with a statement which I think is shared by everyone that in the last years or decades, um, museums have shifted from collections to people, or in other words, they have put people and collections at the same level, at a par. Uh, and usually with this statement, one means people, the audience, but people are also people working in museums, so staff. And in labor intensive organizations such as museum staff are key, staff are very important. Some of the, of the management tools that museums use, the self-evaluation tools that we are familiar with, the quality management tools and so on, they also research not only the satisfaction of, of the audience, of the public, but also the staff satisfa satisfaction. And in, in times, uh, as we are witnessing now, of uh, rapid and unexpected changes, uh, the continuous professional development of, of museum staff is very important. We also at the Institute of Cultural Heritage have used the opportunity of the MUSA project to provide extra training in the digital sphere to our museum professionals. And that's always been very welcomed and there would be a request for more. So at European level, the, the, the topic of skills and, and continuous professional developments and professional profiles is also uh, central uh, in the debate. And there have been uh, a couple of um, working groups uh, on this uh, topic. I would like just to mention the Voices of Culture group on skills training and knowledge transfer traditional and emerging heritage and the OMC, the Open Method of Coordination group on the same subject and you can find the, the outcomes, the reports of these uh, groups online. And recently, more recently, the call, the European call um, to develop a blueprint for sectorial cooperation on skills in the field of cultural heritage. So museum professionals are very important. Their continuous professional development is very important and skills, especially digital skills are nowadays even more key than ever. So to go more into this uh, subject and look at it from different national pers perspectives and also international perspectives, we have five panelists today with us. We have Alexander Matos, uh, <clears throat> who has a master degree in museology from the University of Porto, and he's currently director of the research and training department of Sistemas do Futuro. And he's also professor um, in the Department of Cultural Heritage Sciences and Techniques, also at the University of Porto, and sits on, uh, is as the editor of the CIDOC board, which is an ICOM, one of the ICOM international committees. Then we have with us Filippos Mazarakis, <clears throat> trained in archeology, span history of art, and protection of architectural and urban heritage who works as the curator of plans and drawings and arms and armors at the National History Museum in Athens, and where he also has designed the uh, policy uh, on digital documentation. And he has been, uh, since 2018, vice president of ICOM Greece. Um, Romina Surace, a uh, graduate in political science with an MA in arts and cultural management, 
who works as senior researcher at the Simbola Foundation. In Italy, the Simbola Foundation um, deals with the projects focused on cultural and creative industries, the green economy, local development and social innovation, and every Every year it releases a very important study, a national report uh, uh, called I Am Culture. And finally, we have Lena Tokila, who <clears throat> from Finland, who has a master's degree in education and ethnology and the vocational teacher's diploma. She is director, currently director of training and development for the Finnish Museums Association and in charge of the association's international collaborations. She's also a member of the board of uh, ICOM Finland. She has been on the board of ICOM Finland and she's currently chair of ICOM ICTOP, so the uh, International ICOM Committee, which deals specifically with training of personnel, of museum personnel. So with these uh, four speakers, we would like to go more into the subject and I would like to start with a question, which is, um, to, I would like to ask you to, to um, very briefly draw the scenario in this country against which we can talk about the future of museum professionals. What is it like in your country? What can we mean by the future of museum professionals in your country? And in particular, what are the most urgent needs and the most uh, crucial interventions uh, with regard to the training of museum professionals in your country. Of course, for each of you in your country and for Lena, not only in Finland, but also internationally, as you are looking at this from the observatory of ICTOP. So uh, I would first like to ask Alexander Matos to address this question. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think you are you are listening to me uh, right. I, I don't know if there is any connection problem, but I'd like this opportunity to thank all the partners and also to ICOM board, ICOM Portugal board and our team uh, that help us go through this project. Um, as uh, uh, for our, our national um, status here in Portugal, the only data available regarding uh, a whole lot of issues around digital competence for museum pro professional is the result that we carried um, and the information that we uh, 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 gathered during the last three years uh, of um, of MUSA project. Uh, with the courses, the, the MOOC and the specialization course, we have managed to have a more real picture around the needs of the Portuguese museum professionals. And we could see that uh, we do need to put a big effort on ways to address uh, the lack of uh, digital uh, competencies in the museum. Uh, some of them um, we have managed to build or start uh, at least to build in this project. But I think that the main issue around digital competence is the political change that needs to take place in Portugal and I guess in other, also in other European countries. We are far better than we were 10 years ago, but um, that's a reality, but I think this is not enough. Uh, as we are experiencing during this crisis, some museums and museum professionals are doing their best to overcome the current situation, adding material to the collection website, filming and creating online visits, vi virtual visits, producing digital content like quizzes and other tools, adding some cool stuff to help their audience to overpass the quarantine at their homes. But this is not a structured response and it's far from being a, a, a widespread response to the crisis. Some museums have more tools, more capacity to do this. Others are struggling to give their employers a computer so they can work from home. Some of them are doing cool stuff and with their digitized content, but many others don't have an idea on wh what to digitize and how to start a project. I can go continuously with the examples like this, but I think that issue to be resolved is on a different level, the political one. Um, Europe has different paces, different situations, some of them very complex, but I think that we need to embrace digital competences by adding them not as, as a discipline or teach, teach, teaching material, but as an integrated tool that can be largely used by students 
as soon as it, it's appropriate for, uh, age for them. For this, we need that governments define a digital strategy for, for uh, schools with the cultural sector and start discussing difficult issues like hardware, software, open resources needed, data, security, obsolescence of, of this uh, kind of stuff. And this in Portugal, I guess it's the one of the, the, the main issues that are uh, that is brought by the current situation here in, in, in Portugal. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Um, I think so you, you're talking about a national strategy that should support not only museums but also other uh, institutions and also educational institutions because also schools have witnessed a, a very, very rapid change going digital in a very, very, in a, in a matter of weeks, right? Yeah. So now we would like to ask Filippos to, to, uh, and, uh, to uh, answer the same question and take us into the, Greece, the Greek context. Uh, thank you, Margarita. Um, uh, well, actually, uh, uh, Alejandro has uh, said, uh, uh, um, uh, in other words, what uh, I was thinking of, uh, uh, our experiences are quite uh, similar in Greece. Um, uh, I must say that uh, uh, we are experiencing um, still a generation gap in digital literacy, but uh, uh, it has changed. Uh, we are not no longer the the, um, the those bringing uh, digitization in uh, the older generation of uh, people in museum who were completely uh, working in a completely different way. Uh, actually, we have become the kind of illiterate uh, uh, when we face the younger colleagues entering the museum. Uh, sometimes, um, uh, also. We must uh, stress that uh, European funding has for a long time been the fertilizer for digital transition in the museums. And uh, uh, we do notice that uh, the private sector and the, and the independent specialists surrounding the museum world uh, have proved sometimes uh, more flexible in uh, dealing with the heavy administrative burden uh, linked with these fundings. Um, um, uh, but anyway, we have somehow um, managed to bridge the gap between the museum world and this available money. Um, uh, and uh, today we, we have been led, I must say, after several packages of, uh, of uh, European funding to, to a self-reproducing development and the existence of a whole professional habitat um, uh, respective with digital activities uh, surrounding the museum. Um, and we also um, have come to the realization that the digital shift um, um, uh, is not only a vehicle for change, but it is also a shifting aim in itself. Um, I mean, museums um, uh, need to be more productive uh, of course, and um, uh, need to to compete uh, uh, with uh, with every other um, digital producing, let's say, uh, um, um, entertainment uh, or education uh, uh, offer uh, that exists. Um, uh, but um, the the the, the let, let's say that. Um, the, 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 the digitization is not uh, a, um, uh, a goal to be achieved. It is an ongoing process that cons constantly uh, shifts. And so we all, uh, we, we, we have to be on the move all the time. Um, uh, so the, the, the museum world in Greece is showing uh, much dynamism in all this. Um, it is notable that during the economic crisis, uh, museum became uh, more visited and more visible um, and the current uh, lockdown uh, has not managed to throw a shadow over them. Um, if you read the news, if you scroll through the social media, uh, among numbers of infections and casualties and all this, you always have news of cultural activities 
um, not exclusively, but in a large measure, emanating from museums. And uh, um, um, of course, um, when we talk about digital um, um, knowledge within museums, uh, museums cannot do everything by themselves, but they need to be able to evaluate uh, properly any digital input they ask from the outside world. Um, so, um, uh, to, 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 well, to, to make it a little bit more fancy, um, you need knowledge of the seas if you are to become a great navigator, my dear Portuguese uh, colleagues, uh, even if you don't set your foot outside of your captain's deck. Um, so, um, uh, the digital shift will continue every crisis uh, and every change will invariably lead to more and more digital. Um, our work is complex um, and you cannot aspire to know everything anymore. The old universal curator is no longer here, um, but we need to be understand each other. Um, and we cannot afford being ignorant in anything uh, in our shiny new digital museum world. Um, in ICOM Greece, we have uh, through recent years tried to offer as much interaction in digital skills through conferences, through workshops, uh, etc. This is exactly the, the, the reason why we joined Musa in the first place. Um, so if anything, I would agree with Alessandro that um, uh, what is mostly needed is museums that can understand, uh, which welcome and promote continuous training of their personnel not just once, but continuously. Um, um, and the public authorities also need to make this possible uh, by offering the administrative tools uh, and, and the setting for this to be able to happen. Um, the, 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 the experience of, of, uh, the, of, the, uh, of the trainings offered by Musa, especially the work-based learning uh, part of it, uh, was extremely helpful in identifying this need. Thanks. Thank you, sure. Then embedding the digital thinking, not only a digital strategy, but digital thinking in the overall operation of a museum is maybe that uh, uh, change of mind frame that, that we need and that museums will need. Together with sharing resources and knowledge because no one is able to do it alone. So, yeah. Romina, what is it like in Italy? So. Thanks, Marguerite, and thanks to everyone. I will start with a question. Uh, what museums come into your mind when you think about Italy? Uh, among the ones I love, there are places like uh, the Museum of Science and Technology in Milan, one of the first Italian museums that invested a lot over the last years in digital transformation, but also places like uh, the archaeological park of Ostantica, a place where, where uh, still today it's possible to get lost and disconnect among the ruins of the ancient city. So a timeless experience uh, that have uh, a, very little, a very little technological approach. So these two images are useful because uh, uh, represent the dichotomy that today characterizes the uh, Italian uh, national system, where digital technologies broke through but uh, wide spaces of experimentation are still to be discovered. In, uh, among the, uh, so in, there has been a, an absence of a national politics uh, at a national level for museums, and this has produced a vibrant, but also inhomogeneous reality. Um, in the recent years, there have been uh, two crucial moments at a national level that has improved a lot this situation. First of all, in 2018, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism approved the adoption of the quality standards system for museum, monuments and archaeological sites for the setting up of the national museum system. And in the text, the importance to internet as the first approach between people and museum has often been emphasized. Secondly, in 2019, the Ministry of Culture uh, launched a three-year plan for the digitalization of museums in order to promote all Italian museums 
a uh, capable, uh, a current reference of framework, uh, able, uh, capable of, of uh, guiding the adoption of digital tools. So uh, we can say that uh, digital transformation is a reality in Italy, but at the same time, there are still some uh, resistance. This, for example, what have emerged from a recent study carried out by the Observatory for Digital Innovation promoted by Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, this, uh, this report uh, argues that 76% of the museums interviewed lack a digital strategy. And this data is fundamental in light of uh, the MUSA results because the lack of a strategy uh, can, uh, can result in, uh, the, use, uh, in um, the use of digital tools in a meaningless uh, or trivial uh, ways, we can say. So uh, to improve this situation, uh, in 2020, so at the beginning of this year, the Ministry of uh, uh, Culture in Italy, together with uh, the, uh, the, the Foundation School of uh, Cultural Heritage and in collaboration with ICOM Italy, launched uh, uh, um, integrated training project for museum professionals and uh, um, a week ago taking advantage of this uh, uh, particular time we are living uh, so uh, in which museums uh, uh, are closed uh, they have launched also uh, an e-platform program for museum professional also to develop digital skills and to offer uh, to promote digital, useful digital tools uh, uh, to deal with this uh, uh, health emergency. So in general, I can say that uh, museum professionals um, can contribute to the future of their museums if they are fully engaged in innovative organizational processes. That means uh, working in a multidisciplinary teams, improving collaboration between uh, uh, museum departments, but also between museums and external partnership with other communities. So one of the crucial things to do to improve the ongoing uh, um, transformation processes is maybe to, um, to engage also the leaders of the cultural institution in educational programs. Um, capable of raising awareness of the uh, cross-sectorial and transversal approach that these transformations need. Thank you. Yes, we've had perspectives from three countries, the three partner countries of the MUSA project. And now, Lena, it's to you to maybe report a bit about Finland, but also, most importantly, to give us your viewpoint as chair of ICTO. Thank you, Margareta. Do you hear me well? Okay, thank you. And uh, it's a pleasure to join this panel. And um, it's been uh, this far very interesting to listen to all the presentations. And uh, Margareta asked uh, for a, a scenario from Finland and, and maybe the very first one is that we had a snowing uh, this morning so we had snow on the ground this morning so it's not a very nice spring here up in the north but uh, just uh, three points from from the Finnish point of view during this uh, corona crisis i have to say that that uh, the, the learning by doing among museum professionals has been very rapid and, and uh, that because museum professionals had to learn quickly how to provide audience with digital services. So uh, we, we did not uh, provide any courses on this topic, but, but the museum professionals just themselves took the action and, and uh, several digital exhibitions and tours and, and other ways to provide access to museums were just uh, popping up everywhere, so to say. And the second thing from Finland is um, quite exciting because um, the new Museum Act came into force in the beginning of this year. 
and according to this museum act museums applying for state funding as regional and national specialist museums should among other tasks promote museum activities promote cooperation in museum field promote documenting collection cultural heritage and promote digital accessibility of cultural heritage so this digital aspect is written in our very new museum law so now we are uh, so to say waiting how to to uh, what are we going to do next do we uh, provide a lot of training here in finland or is it more like as i previously said is it learning by doing i think it's the both both cases we do need some very good uh, training just as this muse project for example but also i think uh, learning by doing is quite a uh, good way of, of uh, uh, acquiring knowledge. Uh, the third point uh, from the Finnish point of view is a project we have had in uh, by the uh, Finnish Museums Association. It's called the Growing Competencies for Future Museums. And uh, this project is funded by the Ministry of Education and Culture. And uh, the aim of this project is to map present and future competencies and qualifications in museums throughout the country. And we have organized several workshops for museum professionals and defining to define the competencies needed in the field. And uh, based on these uh, competencies, we built a competence survey that was piloted last summer until uh, uh, last autumn and um, we hope that this survey will provide museum with uh, information on the skills and knowledge competencies uh, their staff processes at the moment and so the survey also provides the museum field with information on the qualifications in museums now and in the future so these are, I think, the, the main things, main point things in, on, in, uh, in Finland regarding these uh, uh, digital skills. When we uh, talk about this uh, same issue on international level, I think the question is quite challenging. Even though uh, uh, the ICTOP, which is the International Committee for the Training of Personnel, uh, and it, uh, and uh, we should know uh, the overall situation, but, but as you may know, it, it, it differs from the European level to the, the global level. It, we are, the states and, and countries are in different, in different phases of the museum field, of the museum sector. And that's why it's uh, a little bit hard to, to uh, talk about of uh, uh, overwhelming uh, reference. But um, there is a lot of active discussion ongoing in the international museum field uh, in relation to the competence and skills of future museum professionals. And uh, we, uh, ICTOP, as ICTOP, we try to provide a museum professionals a forum uh, where they are able to discuss these uh, uh, future uh, uh, competencies. Because to my mind, I think this, uh, these digital skills are related to a bigger picture of, of, of the future museum professionals and their skills and competencies and knowledge. It's not just about digital, digital skills. I think it's the, the, the overall picture of what is needed in the future and how do we get there and um, one thing it, which is very important for us is that our uh, ICTOP, uh, annual meetings we try to arrange them in various places around the globe 
in order to understand the local uh, circumstances and operating environments of different uh, countries and different museum sectors in their countries. And that's why we, we've been in Vietnam or Barbados or, or Namibia and had our uh, national um, 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 annual meetings there to discuss these uh, uh, competence issues with the local uh, museum professionals. And in my opinion, um, there are two different uh, kinds of uh, approaches. The other one is that, that people are talking about uh, general competencies needed in the field uh, or for the other, other group of people in their opinion, it's important to make a very detailed list of all the skills the museum professionals should require. And I don't know, I think it's a sort of a, a mixture of these two opinions, which could be a very good way of, of uh, uh, approaching this question of, of uh, competencies required. And uh, I think that even if, if, if there is a, a possibility to find out what kind of competencies we actually need in the future, which I don't know if it's relevant, I think that um, more and more we have to uh, recognize the, the situation at that one person is not able to gain all the knowledge skills and competencies needed in museum job. I think it's, it's not possible. So I think that, that we could call these hybrid uh, professions, so to say, where there is uh, like IT competencies and then there is competencies in humanities, like history or, or ethnology or, or, or art history. And so, somehow combine this kind of IT knowledge and, and the knowledge of humanities, I, I think that might be the, the, the profile of future museum professionals. And the other one, uh, other uh, important point is the shared, the notion of shared expertise. To my mind, uh, teams of experts and learning from each other is one key, uh, uh, way of, of, of uh, getting the knowledge we need in the future in museums. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lena. I think it was also mentioned uh, this morning in one of the presentations that um, there is a, a need to pool resources together. There was, actually, it was one of the questions coming through. Um, how do we set up the digital infrastructures? How do we maintain them? I mean, this requires a very, very strong cooperation. Now, um, we titled this conference The Future of Museum Professionals in the Digital Era, but in the meanwhile, by the time, between the time we named it and the time we, we actually are carrying out, the future is here. So we, we just jumped into the digital era all of a sudden and had to do that very quickly in, in museums if we hadn't ha done it already. So my question, my last question to you uh, is, uh, to name an example that you, uh, that you saw online, one of, the, one of the activities that museums, Julia Pagel already mentioned some, one of the activities that museums have undertaken in, in, these, in these times of lockdown that impressed you or that you thought was particularly interesting or fun or useful or um, something that you would like to, to share with us. And I would like again to start with Alex. Um, yeah, one, one, I, I, I guess I will use, I will mention two. One uh, from Portugal, uh, it's the, the, the way like, uh, that the uh, Lisbon Museum, the city uh, uh, museum of Lisbon is working on a, um, on a very, on an integrated approach using Facebook, uh, their web pages, different contents around the collection, their team, 
and building up uh, virtual uh, uh, visits and guided visits by video using a lot of stuff that they had before uh, because they were planning that uh, the, their um, digital shift uh, with um, with a um, we, from uh, some years uh, from now and uh, uh, I guess I will uh, you need to look Lisbon um, uh, city uh, Lisbon City Museum on the web and you will find out a lot of very interesting material that is uh, they are uh, adding to their Facebook profiles and uh, uh, website and uh, a lot of issues one other museum that uh, that I've, I guess that it, it's the most um, uh, interesting challenge. It's uh, from the Getty Museum that they uh, studied a, um, a, a, a challenge via Twitter, uh, asking people to use their collections to reproduce them in, with materials that they had at their homes and people that were uh, in quarantine. And the, the result is very, very funny. You need to look on, on that. Some other, uh, in a, a national level as well, um, in Portugal, we have some of museums doing that uh, as well. But uh, ICOM UK launched uh, two hashtags via Twitter, connected museums and connected people that are asking people to, con to use online coll connect collections and uh, connect with other museums with the context of their uh, digitized uh, collections. Uh, and it's very, very interesting, very nice um, conversation going on via Twitter. And the other one, Connected Museum People, is used by uh, museum professionals to introduce themselves to uh, uh, connect with other museum professionals around the world. And I guess it is a very, two very interesting uh, perspectives and, and uh, answers to this crisis. Thank you. Filippos? Yes, well, you asked for one example. Uh, Alessandra uh, <laughs> talked about two examples. I'm going to talk about four examples. Oh, wow. Uh, but quickly, small, though. Just, just very, very small. Uh, the things that are happening because um, the lockdown um, took everybody by surprise and the museums are no exception to this. So, so um, what we see today as a, a proliferation of activity on the net, on the web, uh, is actually work that was already prepared or quite. Um, so uh, today um, um, every museum uploads as much as it can and publicizes, well it, it tries to make as much noise as possible. Um, just to, to show you um, um, the, the Acropolis Museum. I don't know if you are seeing this page. Uh, the Acropolis Museum yes. has uh, shown, um, um, well, um, um, uh, is, 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 is uh, giving to the press one object every few days. Uh, to the digital press, so uh, you have something like a museum, uh, an exhibit of the week or something. Um, and you have um, um, something like um, uh, this, which we did in my museum, the National History Museum, last Sunday's Facebook page, uh, where we posted uh, something which was really um, uh, akin to our current predicament. So this is a letter of 1824 giving instructions to to, to priests, how to avoid um, uh, getting the, the 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 faithful in the church uh, during Palm Sunday, which was last Sunday, um, uh, for fear of contagion. Um, then we have all these hashtags uh, internationally, um, uh, like museums thank health heroes for the World uh, World Health uh, Day last week. The, um, 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 and um, all other kinds of, of uh, um, uh, proposals from museums for interactions by their public. So um, we, uh, uh, we, we have somehow the, the interactive and, and experiential museum um, becoming um, uh, a daily thing 
in in uh, in our computer screens at home and um, uh, finally uh, you have uh, private initiatives uh, like uh, like the museum inside me uh, which is a facebook page uh, uh, asking for people to to uh, to um, uh, to post uh, their own uh, museum exhibits from home um, so the home becomes the museum um, next month we are having the uh, we are having the uh, let's say the International Museum Day. So um, we expect a proliferation of, uh, of digital activities. And in ICOM Greece, we're trying to, to set up an interactive map of all this. And uh, finally, uh, just one preoccupation that seems to be uh, generalized, especially in private museums, is uh, that they are all um, visibly concerned not only with their social but also with their financial sustainability. Uh, it, this is very crucial. Um, you have you you see many um, online shops uh, uh, publicizing uh, uh, organization of bazaars online. You have fundraising activities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it is worth of notice. Thank you, <clears throat> Romina. Very, very shortly, and, and Lena also very shortly, because we want to leave time for some questions. Yeah. In order to, to understand what uh, so the virtual fever, we can say, that is going on in Italy in these days, just type the hashtag, uh, Io resto a casa, I stay at home. Uh, that uh, reveals uh, to be uh, a very simple intuition that uh, um, confirms the effectiveness of this tool, especially the social media, and they uh, improved to be excellent uh, catalyzers and social uh, symbolic aggregators, more convincing than any other uh, persuasive mode. Uh, so the example that, uh, so, uh, not all, in these days, a lot of contents has been created and put online, but not all these contents uh, reflect the same familiarity with the new languages uh, and new instruments. In Italy, one of the uh, cultural institutions that uh, um, has distinguished uh, in the last years uh, for its creativity is the uh, Trenale Milano, that uh, in this occasion launched a very interesting project called uh, the Decameron Steaming Stories, inspired by uh, Giovanni Boccaccio's The Decameron um, about uh, a young group of people uh, who stayed outside from Florence for 10 days to escape the Black Plague in 1348 uh, and took turns telling stories to pass the time. So in, this in these weeks, uh, Trinale Milano invited a lot of artists, designers, uh, singers, writers, journalists, uh, and so on, to inhabit its empty space uh, in order to deliver personal stories. So every day uh, at 5 p.m. for all the month of March, a story has been broadcasted on uh, the Instagram channel of Trenale, uh, offering contents uh, capable of putting together entertainment and education. And this, uh, this project uh, recalled another project that some years ago, uh, created by British Museum and uh, the BBC in uh, 2010, uh, called uh, a, a World History in 100 Objects. It was, uh, um, um, it was a series of uh, very short uh, stories uh, um, aimed at uh, tracking the history of mankind starting from museums collections and thanks to the radio this content reached British people um, in unexpected places and moments so at home at tea time but, but also in car in the way from home to work and things like that so that uh, um, the, the project has a big success I'm also among the people who uh, have been in British Museum only once or who never be in British Museum. So, of course, this project I have spoken about uh, was realized in a large scale 
but why can we not imagine a similar project uh, realized in a smaller scale, uh, for example, uh, uh, developed together with uh, local partners such as uh, uh, Campo, Campus Radio Station? Uh, the most important thing in, from this story and from many other examples, I think, is that the narrative focus shouldn't only regard museum collection, but uh, the connection of its meanings to wider stories that regard all of us. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. And the story of the world in 100 objects or whatever uh, was very interesting because it was done through the radio. So something that you are usually used to 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 see uh, a museum object was just simply narrated. So um, that that tells a lot. Um, Lena, we we have a few minutes for your intervention, and then we we go to the questions. Um. Give you an, an a different example of of uh, what happened during these uh, early days of this um, corona crisis. Uh, the Finnish National Gallery publishes uh, research um, papers. It's actually a research uh, uh, magazine or journal, and it's on on web. And uh, in the last um, number which was released in the uh, March uh, 27th, the uh, Museum of Contemporary, uh, Contemporary Art Kiasma director, Levi Hapala, wrote in his editorial, the title was, When Museums Are Open Again, The Crisis Is Over. I just read a very short text here in the very uh, end of his uh, editorial. Our task in the museums is to ask ourselves what kind of narratives we create from this current time of epidemic crisis and its prevailing uh, dystopic mindscapes. We should ask ourselves how do we write relevant histories in a time of crisis and what are those lessons we should learn. Those forthcoming stories should be multiple linked to other stories, individual narratives from all around the world, not only given official through truth or nationalistic narratives. I would see our artists from local and global communities being very perspective at this point. And so when this continues. And the postscriptum is the title of this editorial is taken from a column by Anastina Nykänen on the same day uh, edition of Helsingin Sanomat, which is the largest um, uh, newspaper in Finland, entitled Why the Closing of the Museums Made Me Cry. The current epidemic reminds the author of the writings after the Second World War when the opening of the museums was seen as a real sign of peace. And we think that this uh, column by Anastina Nykänen, where she asked why the closing of the museums made me cry, it was very, very strong uh, speech for the museums. And, and it was uh, very widely uh, distributed in, in social media as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we, we come to some questions and, and I have one for you, Lena, um, a quick one. Is the survey conducted in Finland about compet competencies already published and where? No, no, no. We don't have the results yet. So we do have some results, but it's not finished yet. And, and we will let you know when, whenever it's uh, done. I think it's this spring might be the... the... And then, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so wh where will we be able to, to find the information about the, on, on the website of the Finnish Museums Association? Of course, yes. And uh, as you may remember, I'm on study leave right now, so Paulina Kinanen will take care of the, the, the uh, project and the results of, of the project. Okay. And then we are looking at the questions here. We have uh, several, uh, we have a cluster of questions around um, all these digital content. Is it just an accumulation 
collection of information that lacks a mediation structure. Have museums simply put online what they had, or they had, they had, uh, they, they have produced more? Is this something which is um, somehow not so effective because we have gone for quantity rather than for quality? Would some of you like to to react to this? May I, I answer? Sure. Um, well, um, um, a partial answer, of course. Um, there is no definite uh, answer to this, but um, uh, I, I do uh, think that uh, um, it was inevitable. I mean, um, uh, we are facing a situation that nobody expected. Even while, even if you were uh, looking at the news, you did not uh, uh, imagine the, the speed at which. Uh, all this lockdown happened and this uh, change uh, uh, in in our mentalities uh, has uh, jumped upon us so uh, I suppose it's kind of um, uh, let's say quantity and noise uh, is something which is inevitable at, the, at this period but I think that it it, it, it will grow into something much more um, uh, sustainable and um, uh, let's say organized. I mean, it's in, uh, because everyone realizes now the strength of digital communication uh, for museums and how um, uh, you can survive through this. Even if we consider our current situation as something which is uh, an exception and that we are expecting in a few weeks or in a few months all this to have ended, the the future is there, as you said, uh, and uh, we are not going back uh, to what we knew uh, one or two months ago. Uh, change is inevitable. Right, and we have another uh, question here, or maybe comment, saying uh, after the quarantine, when museums reopen, how important is it to incorporate digital strategies on site, or are digital strategies mostly applied online? I think they are already applied on site. Um, and okay. maybe, yes, would, would someone like to, to react yeah. to this? So. I guess we, uh, if you have in a proper way a digital strategy, it's a part of the strategy of the museum. So you cannot take the both in different levels. You need to, be, to have an integrated approach on digital. Uh, because um, museums are tend to be uh, uh, places of physical connections and they will be because we have collections and we connect uh, uh, with people uh, throughout our collections but um, we need to be on a digi on the digital sphere and on the digital space as well and we cannot be a different um, uh, alias or uh, a different person in digital and in physical ways. So the strategies should be combined and not be uh, a different thing for the, for the digital sphere. Sure, I, I do, yeah. Yeah, Please. I agree on this, that I, I think, I also think that the digital strategy is just a part of the, the whole strategy for the museum. So it's not different. It, it's not something which is completely uh, uh, sort of separately done or separately uh, operated. It's it's part of the the strategy of the the museum. So I think you you have to have a digital strategy uh, now and and uh, now it's a very good w uh, time for you to try different options. I I think everything is now. Uh, uh, well taken by the audience. They are very interested in museums and, and would like to see some more materials or collections online. I guess, Margarita, just one final, because I agree, I totally agree with uh, Lina as well and uh, with Filippos when he was saying that we, 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 have, uh, we, are, we are facing a, 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 an important uh, 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 time 
And so I think, I guess that the proper way to deal with this is to learn with, the, with what museums are doing right now. And to learn, we need to, and to learn with this, we need to evaluate um, what we are doing these moments, even though it is a crisis, but it can help us to build up some, some strategy or to find our strategy for the future. For the future. And we can, there, there's a lot of data available right now being produced every single day by people uh, going to our websites to our Facebook uh, accounts and to, uh, uh, and we have a lot of input through via the, the social networks and we can use that data to, to, to evaluate ourselves to uh, I can't, you know. We cannot hear you so, uh, so well. Uh, uh, within the, 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 it can be used as well for, for, for uh, the physical museum. Thank you. I would like to take one very last question, um, uh, which says, uh, going digital is somehow democratizing the knowledge and the contents of our museums, but aren't we reinforcing the digital divide between the audiences that have access and good digital literacy and the ones that don't have access at all? I think that's a very interesting question to close with. Uh, Lena? Lena, you have to unmute yourself. I was muted. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. This is, as, as you told, Margarita, this is a very important question. And, um, and I think it's uh, all across, across society, the same question of, uh, of uh, digital literacy. When we are thinking about our uh, senior citizens now, in, for example, in Finland, they are not able to go outside their homes, they just have to stay at home. So they are not able to, to get access to museums if they are museum lovers, for example, and they don't know the, they don't have the, the uh, digital skills to do this. So I, I do know that there are a lot of voluntary um, uh, people trying to help these elderly people or otherwise, uh, persons who are not so used to use these uh, digital uh, devices, but um, I'm not sure that are uh, the museums the only uh, institutions to try, which try to find the solution to this problem. I think we have to unite our forces with, with other institutions in, in, in society and also the authorities. To, to find out what to do, what is the best way of, of solving this problem. Any other comments or closing comments from our panelists before I hand it over to Culture Action Europe? Filippos, please, yeah. but yeah, short. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just that this, uh, this uh, um, a question of uh, divide, um, between the haves and the have-nots on the digital world uh, is something which uh, is not only uh, is not exclusively in our sphere of uh, museum work. It is uh, everywhere. I mean, we had lots of discussions uh, about this uh, uh, with uh, schools uh, in the last month. Uh, how do uh, chil school children with no computers can cope? Um, but uh, we 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 have to to realize that. Uh, uh, historically, change um, comes much faster in times of crisis and uh, that the solution, uh, uh, of course, cannot be to, um, to try to stop or to, but we, we need to, 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 to try and find ways of involving those who have most difficulty in doing so. So, uh, otherwise, uh, well, uh, discrepancies will always be there. We cannot, of course, eliminate them, but we we could uh, eventually um, make it make the gap 
uh, lesson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our time is up. I would like to thank you all, uh, Lena, Romina, Filippos, and Alexander. Okay. Uh, thank you also for, for keeping the time. And I would like to hand it over to Natalie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margarita. Our webinar is drawing to an end. Uh, on behalf of co-organizers uh, co of this online conference, let me thank all the speakers for their contributions and all of you for your questions and for being with us today. We would like to receive your feedback on this online conference. Soon after the webinar, you will receive the link to the satisfaction survey. We will highly appreciate to have your feedback on that. With this communication, we will also share with you some of the presentations of today's conference as uh, promised. Uh, but for the full package of the presentations, please do check the MUSA website shortly. The recorded version of this webinar will become available at the MUSA website too, which is www.project-musa.eu. Well, thanks again for being with us today. And we do look forward to meeting all of you or some of you at some of other uh, MUSA occasions. On behalf of the whole MUSA consortium, we wish you a fantastic afternoon ahead. <laughs>